I like to shock people and tell them that although I'm a rabbi, I don't believe in God. People can't believe that. I say, really, I'll take it a step further. Not only do I not believe in God, but even Moses didn't believe in God. They say, how, that's, how, how could you say such a thing? I say, not only that, but if you look in the Torah, you will never find the word God because it was written in Hebrew. The word G-O-D is not a Jewish word. We don't believe in God. We believe in the Yud, the He, then the Vav and the He, which when we actually see that word, we say Adonai. But what does that word really mean? That word comes from the word Havaya, which means existence or reality. It is also associated with the three words Haya, Hove, Ye, was, is, and will be, as well as it's connected to the verb Lihiyot, which means to be. In other words, who do we believe in? We believe in the ultimate reality who always was, who is, and who always will be, who is the source of all being, who is ever present. That's who I believe in. I do not believe in a God who's some being floating in outer space over there. I remember I once saw a cute Calvin and Hobbes comic strip where Hobbes turns to Calvin and says, Calvin, do you believe in God? And Calvin's got this philosophical look on his face, looking up with his hands behind his head, and he says, well, somebody's out to get me. And so many people believe in some big God over there trying to get them. Now, when I was a teenager, I went to this underground movie called Bambi Meets Godzilla. It was not a very long film. Basically, Bambi is grazing happily and peacefully out there in the field, and suddenly a huge foot stomps on Bambi, and that's the end of the film. And then there's 20 minutes of credits. And I thought to myself, isn't that a strange name for a monster? Godzilla. And I think a lot of people think that at Sinai, the Jewish people heard, I am Godzilla who took you out of Egypt to make you into my slave. Okay? But people have this confused notion of a God who is angry, who is vengeful, who is constantly judging and criticizing them, who is out to get them, and he's over there and we're over here. There's no such God. When Judaism talks about God, and it really doesn't talk about God, it talks about Adonai, or we refer to as Hashem, we are referring to the ultimate reality where in which we all exist, the reality which was, is, and always will be, and the source of all being. It's important to realize that we are beings, right? There are mineral beings, animal beings, vegetable beings, human beings. We are beings. A being is a verb, not a noun. And who is the source of all being? The source of all being is Hashem. Therefore, I would say the best translation of the word, the Yud, the He, the Vav, the He that we find in the Bible is the Be'er. If I were, if I saw someone singing, I'd call them a singer. If I saw someone dancing, I'd call them a dancer. If I heard someone speaking, I'd call them a speaker. What is the divine ultimately doing? He's being. And this entire universe is a being. Now, what would it mean to be or not to be? That's my question. Okay, what it means to be. If a person is funny, but they're not being funny, it means they're not expressing their funniness. But if a person is funny and they're being funny, then they're expressing their funniness. Kabbalah teaches us this entire world is a divine being, is an expression of godliness. If God were a singer, we would be his singing. If God were a dancer, we would be his dancing. In fact, the Zohar points out that the word Israel, when you play Scrabble and you mix up the letters, actually spells the word Shir El, which means the song of God. And that is the message that the Jewish people have to bring to the world. That we are all notes in this incredible symphonic experience of the great maestro master who is revealing himself in every single detail of this universe. And therefore, there's no such thing as a God over there that's trying to hurt me. That's as crazy as the singer trying to hurt his song, as the dancer trying to hurt his dance. Therefore, I would suggest that the best translation of the word Hashem, the Yud and the He, then the Vav and the He, is Be'er. I thought it was really intelligent when I came up with this, and I gave this idea over one day, and a fellow said to me, you know, Rabbi, that's a real word. Look in the unabridged Oxford Dictionary, and you'll find this word. And I looked it up, and sure enough, there actually is a word, Be'er, and is defined as an intoxicating drink. But just underneath that, there is another word, Be'er, 
the self-existent, the great I am. Unbelievable. Once upon a time, there was actually a word called the be-er that was God. We are beings. He is the be-er.